Okay, we're going to talk about some electrical testing equipment, some things you need to have, and some things you don't necessarily need to have but make your life a lot easier. Um, first thing, you need a meter, whether it's one of these Lowe's brand, you know, whatever, you can get a cheap Chinese one. Um, anything's better than nothing. For testing circuits, you need voltage, you need resistance current not so much but it helps a lot this is a snap-on meter it's equivalent to a fluke uh, 86 or 87 I'm not sure this is about a $400 meter this one uh, have this because it does DC current for the clamp you can put this on a wire and tell how much amperage is going through it this right here is a power probe this is my go-to uh, electrical testing deal it's got two leads that go onto the battery and this unit right here it has a ground lead that comes up that you can do many many things with this you can test for voltage at uh, a relay or a component and you can also use the buttons to supply power or supply a ground so for example if you were trying to test a, a AC compressor you can go to the relay uh, find your diagram, find out which pins do what. 30 and 87 are always your power. 85 and 86 are always going to be your signal and power for the for the coil. But you can go right to pin 30 and 87. You can probe them, find out if you have battery voltage there. And you can go to the coil driver side and push this, and it'll supply power directly to the relay or whatever component you're testing. Um, let's see some other stuff we got. What do we got here? Um, we have temperature probes These are good for testing Temperature, I don't really ever use these um, Let's see Shrink sleeve for making solder joints. You always want to solder a Wiring connection butt connectors are a big no-no unless you're doing you know a quick setup for testing or whatever this stuff is actually a, a Mopar brand. It's got a glue inside of it. So when you shrink it, uh, the heat also melts the glue and that helps to seal it. See, these are uh, relay jumpers. You can uh, pop a relay out, stick this in its place, and you can test all the pins or you can backfeed power through it. These are another type of relay tester. Uh, you pop your relay out. It's got a little switch on it you can turn on and off and also this loop on here coincides with the, the amp clamp you go around there and it'll tell you what the current flowing through that component is uh, see soldering iron this is basic I put a hose clamp on this to keep it from rolling this is just a 60 watt uh, tube solder you know I mean that's that's pretty straightforward stuff uh, paste flux that helps to clean and uh, it also helps to suck the solder onto whatever it's on see we got some uh, big wide flat nose for pulling relays and fuses we got mini cutters we got uh, strippers we got crimpers tiny little angled needle nose are great this is a flush cutter this works really good for uh, cutting terminals off of connectors and whatnot. Um, let's see, a sharp knife, you're going to need that. Um, torch, that's not really necessary for automotive stuff, but it works good if you're doing a lot of heat, sh heat shrinking, shrink sleeving. Let's see, uh, this little guy here is pretty cool. This goes in a cigarette lighter, and you can test for power with the light. Or you can also clamp off of this to supply power for some unit or module or whatever you're testing. Uh, these little mag base connectors, holder dealies. I don't know why that's in there. It's exhaust manifold stud for the Dodge truck. We don't need that. Uh, let's see, but these are pretty cool. You got little magnets on them so you can put wires in there and hold it while you're soldering them. I actually don't use those here. I should probably take those home. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? We have a test light. This one's digital. 
uh, there's two different types. There's digital, like this one, and there's also the ones with the incandescent bulb. Both of them have their places. These ones are good because if you're testing a circuit that's res uh, sensitive to current flow, like a PCM or some, some sort of driver, um, this won't pull as much current through it. If you use one with the incandescent bulb, it'll pull whatever current is required to light the bulb through the circuit that you're testing. So you could easily pop a, a diode or a MOSFET or a JFET or you know whatever's in your in your circuit. Uh, let's see what else we got. Random lengths of wire, you gotta have those. Electrical tape must have. This is a just a different type. It's got some reinforcing in it. This is just t vinyl tape. Um, let's see lighters. You gotta have those for shrink sleeving. Uh, let's see. We got a spark tester here. That's not really what we're talking about. And um, I always keep connectors off of harnesses that I've replaced just because of the connectors inside there. You might find a, a terminal or something that's damaged and you need another connector. Or uh, if you do SRS stuff, you can keep the connectors. Like this high labeled side airbag. So if you're diagnosing an SRS component, you can just plug this in, jump it and find out if it's uh, short or whatever. But if you don't understand SRS stuff, do not do SRS stuff. You can kill yourself or total a car out by deploying all the airbags on accident. Uh, let's see, test lead adapters. These ones are needle sharp, and yes, I have poked the shit out of myself with these before. We got straight ones, we got angled ones, we got bent ones. Those, uh, your test leads typically, depending on brand, like this one, my snap-on one, this uh, alligator clip will unscrew and you can screw these adapters on there so you can back probe uh, behind the connector. You never, ever, ever want to pierce a wire for testing. It'll corrode. If you do absolutely necessarily have to do that, you need to cover this. Uh, electrical tape, liquid electrical tape works well, but you never want to pierce a wire is it's absolutely necessary okay what else do we got um see this is just uh some lights that i got rigged up for load testing i use these for testing batteries uh just random lengths of wire this right here is a 10 watt uva uh, led i use this for testing for uh ac leaks looks for a uv dye uh, let's see, PCM connectors from when I worked at Dodge, you know, just random lengths of wire. Light bulbs are always good. If you don't have a meter, you can test for power on a circuit by using a light bulb. Let's see, more random lengths of wire, more Dodge crap. Um, lengths of wire, random modules, um, fuses, relays. Don't worry about these, these are for, uh, tumblers, ignition switches, and stuff. Um, these are actually pretty cool. These are called polyfuses. They, uh, instead of blowing a fuse and having it unusable, these will actually just get super ultra mega hot, and it'll break the connection. So you don't end up blowing a, a fuse. After they cool down, it'll reestablish that connection. But you gotta be careful with those, because you will burn the shit out of yourself with those. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, some random modules. But this is all years and years of, of collection. You don't really need all this stuff to do any sort of diagnostics. What you need to start with is a meter. That's where you need. You can do all of your basic testing with a meter. Uh, you don't need any of this fancy shit. I just happen to do uh, a lot of electrical stuff. And this stuff, you know, as a flat rate technician, anything that you can purchase that will uh, help you diagnose something faster and quicker, especially if it's warranty. Uh, yeah, AC stuff. Um, anything you can do to save time. If you're doing it in your parents' garage on jack stands and time is not important, um, you can just you know, use whatever you got. Go to Harbor Freight and buy one of the $11 ones. It'll get you in a ballpark. Most of them are actually pretty accurate, but I wouldn't do any major diagnostics with them.